All right, guys, now we will take a look at the hard drive space and how we can effectively manage it under Ubuntu server. So here I'll present the topic of having volume groups and logical volumes. Why is this interesting? So far we have physical partitions and uh, hard drives. And the standard work with them is a little bit inflexible. With the help of volume groups and uh, logical volumes, we can actually add our physical hard drives to be managed by those groups. And out of them, we can create logical volumes. This way we can have more than one hard drive connected and united in such uh, volume groups and be able to be flexible on the resizement of the logical volumes as well as providing additional free space by just adding new physical hard drives to those volume groups. So let's see how in Ubuntu server we can create such a setup. One way to check the drive space on our system is to type df-th for visibility. So we have one hard drive, def sda1, it's of type system extended 4, it's almost 5 gigabytes and we have 2 gigabytes of free space. Actually our root directory starts from there, so we are mounting the whole drive into the root directory. If we type mount, we can see a lot of information about the different subsystems which are mounted to our system or connected. And we can see that actually SD1 is mounted and can be accessible under the root directory. And it's mounted with read-write permissions. If we mount additional devices, they will show here. If we would like to take a look at the partitions of the hard drive, we can type sudo fdisk and then type the name of the partition we would like to take a look or the device, so it will be SDA, we will enter our password, and we are inside of the interface of FDisk. So with P, we can list all the partitions we have in our server. So we can see the start sector and the end sector, as well as the number of the sectors, the size, and the type of the system which this device have. Also, we see that the boot flag has been set up, which means that we are booting from this device. Now let's uh, create one new partition with the N. We see that we don't have a free space, so we cannot create a new partition, but we can exit from FDisk, close the connection towards our computer, and under the virtual box, we'll stop the machine. And from the settings, we'll go to storage. From the controller SATA, we'll add a new hard drive and we'll create a new disk. So it will be a new virtual disk drive on which we'll make our experiments. We'll make it of one gigabyte of size. And with this, we can start our machine. In the meantime, we'll connect again to the machine. So once we are inside of the machine, we can list the contents of the devices, which start with SD and we see our first device with its first partition. And now we have this a new hard drive we just created, which is called def sdb. So we can just type sudo fdisk and we'll take a look at this device. We can list the partitions. So we see that the device is one gigabyte and we don't have partition on it. With n, we can create a new partition. I will choose primary partition and we'll choose one for the default primary partition. I will choose to start from the beginning of the hard drive and now we can specify the size of this partition so let's take 250 megabytes and now the partition is created if we list again uh, the partitions we see that all the start and the end sectors as well as the size and the partition is of type linux with l we can list all the supported uh, partitions types so we can change the partitioning of uh, this device but before this let's uh, create another partition so with n on this time we'll choose extended partition number two and the first sector will be right after the first partition and we'll give it again 250 megabytes so you can specify here kilobytes megabytes gigabytes up to petabytes if we type p we can see the two partitions we created on this device with D, we can delete partitions. So with control C, we stop this command. We just had to specify the first or the second partition we would like to delete. Now, by the way, the changes we are making here are not directly applied to our hard drive. Uh, we have to write the changes in order for them to become active. And with T, we can change the partition type. Let's say that we would like for the second partition to make it compatible with Windows. So we will choose number C and now we see our partitions 
we can we double your right at the changes let's say we would like to list the devices first under dev sd we see the two partitions appeared here and now in our current directory we'll create new directory which will be let's say drive one and the next thing we would like to do is to mount the newly created partition into our hard drive directory so we'll type sudo mount def sdb2 let's say into the drive1 directory and we see that we have error this is because actually we have created the partition but we haven't placed a file system inside so this we can do with a, a command mkfs and since we know that it was fat partition so we'll use vfat and now we'll specify our def sdb2 drive we'll just type refat probably we'll be able to mount finally this partition on our drive and we can go to our drive one directory this is our partition if we take a look at the information at the bottom we see that the device sdb2 of type vfat is mounted in this directory if we would like to stop this connection between the directory accessing the device we can just type sudo amount and then we'll type def sdb2 and right now we see that the target is busy just because we are inside of this directory when we exit of the mount point and type the same comment we see now that the device is no longer uh, mounted the same thing we can do for the other device since we already have uh, this drive one directory and it's just a mount point in order to mount the device to this directory we'll have again error so we have to format the partition and we'll use again uh, mkfs this time we'll change the device to sdb1 and the type will be extended for and uh, after this we can try to mount into the drive one enter the directory if we check the hard drive usage we see that we've created this mount point and the file system type is extended for which is a standard linux type of file system all right let's enter again our f disk but before to amount this newly created mount point so we'll type sudo fdisk dev sdb and we see those two devices that we created and actually we would like this time to delete both of the partitions so we'll type delete and then the first one again delete and the second one is be deleted if we list we see that we don't have any more partitions we'll create one primary and it will be of maximum size of one gigabyte so we will choose plus 1g here okay maybe plus 900 megabytes i would like to remove the signature and let's list the partition so far it's of type linux and now with a t we'll change the type of the partition or the whole drive and we'll choose that we would like to use this type of partition 8e because it's the one for our logical volume manager so we'll change it to 8e now we see the partition is of a preferred type we'll type w to write the changes and we can also use part probe to write those changes and to notify the kernel that uh, those uh, changes have already happened afterwards we'll specify the device dev sdb of course with the sudo permissions okay now we'll set up the logical volume manager and by default it's uh, not installed in ubuntu server so we'll type so the apt install lv2 for the using of the logical volume manager in ubuntu server we'll start afresh with our dev sdb and so it's clean we'll create new partitions we'll choose n the first will be primary first sector by default and it will be around 200 megabytes type plus 200 m for now this first partition sdb1 is created the next one will be extended and let's say the same size all right so we have the two partitions the next thing i would like to do is to change their types so we type t and then for the first uh, partition we'll choose 8e so this partition here because it will support our later actions so we'll type 8e again type t this time for the second partition and we'll type 8e when we list the partitions they are both linux lvm and we can type w to write the partition table we can type sudo apart probe so this will synchronize also the information with the kernel 
Now, when we list our uh, devices, we see the SDP1 and 2 appeared. All right, so now following uh, this schematics here, we will create our physical partitions and unite them in a volume group. Afterwards, we'll create out of the volume group uh, several logical volumes. Okay, we start with the physical partitions. We will use the SDB1 and 2 for this, and we will type sudo pv create dev sdb1 and the same for sdb2 if we type pv scan sorry with the root we see that we have two physical volumes which we can manage using the logical volume manager and now we can create a volume group and place devices inside so we can type sudo vg create and now the name of the volume group let's say vg1 and inside which devices we would like to place it will be dev sdp1 and dev sdb2 okay now our volume group one has been created and we can use the sudo vg display command and we see the information about our vg1 group so we see that the size of this group is almost 400 uh, megabytes containing two of our hard drives and this is the free space inside of our volume group we'll create a new logical volume let's say that we would like to use 100 megabytes out of this volume group so we'll just type sudo lv create and now the size it's 100 megabytes the name will be data1 and from where we would like to get this size or towards which volume group to connect this logical volume the name of the group is vg1 and now the logical volume data1 has been created and we can use the command lv scan to see that actually this device is active and it's under dev vg1 data1 we can type ls minus la dev vg1 and we see that we have this device now working now and just because there is nothing on the disk so it's not initialized we have to format it and add file system sudo mqs.extended4 we'll use dev vg1 data1 and now our drive vg1 data1 can be used since we have drive1 folder and inside we have nothing mounted we can type mount dev vg1 data1 into the drive1 folder of course prepending sudo in front when we enter to drive1 we see that we have successfully mounted the directory and we can use this device all right let's see how we can extend our volume group we will type vg scan and pv scan so we have two devices which are inside of the same group vg1 now let's go in f disk so we type sudo f disk dev sdb and inside we see the partitions we'll create one new standard partition we'll make it again 200 megabytes it's created now we'll change the type with t and again we'll make it linux lvm our new partition is called sdb3 it, this can be actually external hard drive but here for the purposes of the lecture we are saving everything into one hard drive so we'll type w and then a part rope to synchronize the information and to write the partition table so now if you can remember we have only two devices inside of our vg1 group so we can use a special command called vg extend so we'll type sudo vg extend vg1 and the new device we would like to join to this group dev sdb3 and if we check again our group we'll see that it contains three devices so the total size of the group increased to almost 600 megabytes and let's see our logical volume we'll type sudo lv scan and it has 100 megabytes let's see how dynamically we can increase the size of this vg1 data one this can be done with a command lv extend so we'll type sudo lv extend and then we would like to add let's say 300 megabytes to this logical volume from this logical volume towards our device which is called dev vg1 data one and see now how the size of our device changed from 100 megabytes to 400 uh, megabytes that's how easy you can extend the space using logical volume manager and actually if we type 
on df minus th, we see that still the size of the device is 100 megabytes. Let's see how we can change this. We actually have to finally resize the whole file system. So we'll type sudo resize to fs and then we'll type our dev vg1 data1. If we take a look at the information, once again, we see that now we are with the extended almost 400 megabytes in our drive one. We saw how we could create logical volume, this dev vg1 data1. Let's see how we can also remove such a volume. So first we have to amount it. We'll type sudo amount dev vg1 data1. And once it's amounted, we can type sudo lv remove and again our device. And now if we type sudo lv scan or pv scan, we see that we have volume group, but we don't have logical volumes attached to this group and using its space. One more thing uh, to discuss is the fs tab. So if we type sudo nano etc fs tab, this is a file Ubuntu server loads initially while rebooting. So we have one unique identificator of the device. The root is here, the mount point, and then the file system type. And then we specify whether we would like the device to be checked on every reboot. Also, we have another device here, and actually this is our swap file. So we can actually edit the file and place our own devices here once we know they are unique identificator so they can be mounted automatically on each reboot of the file system. But how to find those identificators? So we can go to a directory dev disk by UUD and uh, actually we can see that uh, this is the unique identificator and it points to our SDA. If we now create a new logical volume like it was before, LV create minus L, let's say 400 megabytes, and it will be called data one and attach it to volume group one and then format it with a file system, mkfs.extended4 dev vg1 data one. When we take a look once again at this directory, we see that our newly created logical volume is having this unique identification number. We can uh, copy it and again with nano edit the etc fs tab. And here we can specify this identification number. We'll just paste it. And then a mount point. For the mount point, we'll specify our home directory server admin and then the newly created mount point drive one. Then with the tab, we'll specify the type extended four. We are basically copying everything from the above. Read only and then zero, one. Okay, we save with control O, we exit the editor. And now if we type mount or bf minus ta, we see that the device is not mounted, but we can use the special command mount minus a. And this will actually reread the information from FS tab, and we should be able to see our device mounted. And here on the last line, we see VG1 data1 is being mounted towards our drive1. So when we go to home, actually we are here. When we go to drive1, we see that it's mounted, and that's how you can mount a device automatically. And if this server reboots, again, first up will be red and we'll have the mount point working.